Hello, welcome to the Turkish Films Chess Channel. Uh, today is a special day. It's actually breaking news. Today we're going to be playing chess. And that's why I hit the play button. You can see I'm 1975. Uh, I was 1979 uh, quite recently. I had one of my longest win streaks. I had a seven game win streak. And they were all like fairly straightforward wins, honestly. It was like a lot of like center forks and um, like queenside domination stuff like that and it's just the pressure kind of got to them i'm playing against a 2009 if i win i get nine points if i lose i'm down seven so i play i play this knight here i used to play knight c3 but knight f3 stops the winner counter gambit which i played a game on stream actually a long time ago and i lost that game and i was just like i do not want to have to learn the whole win over counter gambit so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna ignore it all right, so this looks like it's turning into, we, we gotta stop this right here. We're playing the Alapen now. And I wanna play e4, obviously, but he can take it. And for some reason, I think that's still okay. I'm trying to remember if and why it's okay. Hmm. Maybe e4 is not okay. Otherwise, it's bishop here, and we take it. The problem is he goes here. So, I want to take this pawn. So just e3? e3 just seems so incredibly modest that it really bothers me. Also, all my pawns are on dark squares, and my dark square bishop isn't out yet. So it's e3. I feel like e4 is a gambit that, that you could play. I remember looking at the Slav a long time ago. This is the check variation. Take the pawn, and you play bishop f5. Let's see, does a move like this work? Attacking the pawn? What's wrong with that move? Knight e5 is bad because you're moving the same piece twice. It's good because I'm attacking this pawn. I think I shouldn't stress about the pawn, I need to focus on development. If I'm focusing on development, it looks like this move. But then can he just move his, bit, his knight anywhere he wants? So then here... Oops. Like this. Man, I'm like really suffering right now. E3 just seems so passive. So if E3, can he defend the pawn without some awkward move like this? That's my only question right now. I think he can't. I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Ugh, E5 comes. No, it's not bad. Unless he pushes twice. Then knight here and he trades it off. My queen ends up here, though, when we get a battery. We get a double attack, actually. So, I'm, I know I'm talking in code right now. Okay, this is this is good. I'm, I'm really happy with this. His last square bishop is out, but it's, it's locked out. And so I think something like this would be great. He's aiming for this, but I'm going to castle, so I don't think it matters. I'm just kind of running on assumption here that this is all okay. Nothing crazy's happened. I'm just low on time compared to that, compared to him, just because of that opening move. I think that was an important an important moment. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't have done this if I hadn't spotted queen b3, uh, double attacking the pawns. Yeah, this move strikes me as, as kind of strange. Um, I know, I'm, honestly, I'm used to having my bishop on the long diagonal, so a move like a5 is kind of weakening, like unnecessarily. So what should we do? I think we should try to go in the center somehow. Uh, I want to play a move like this. Actually, yeah, I want to play my rook over. The problem is it lines up with the bishop, which means I think his knight hopping in the middle is probably pretty good. e4 doesn't work. Should I take his bishop? Eh, that seems stressful. Is this bishop any good, or is this bishop not so, not so good? Hmm. I could bring my bishop back. And hurt his piece. The problem is that my bishop is one of my best pieces. Oh, I can go knight backwards and attack his bishop. Then his bishop has to go back to one of these squares. And I would consider that transaction positive for me because I'm kind of threatening to break through on the queen side. I don't really need to, though. I should go for his king because he's uncastled, which means I should open the center. And I think that's all there is to it. I just need to open the center. 
So it's gotta be E4 then. Sacking the pawn. Sorry. E4, he takes it with the knight. I take with the knight, he takes with the bishop. I go this way. He drops back. I take this. He takes. Eh, the center's not uh, 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 open enough there. Also, the problem is that his bishop is actually hindering my rook from getting to the middle. I really feel like it's e4. Shoot. We're gonna play e4. Playing e4 against a stronger player, I have half the time he has. I'm not going super great. Oh, that's great for me. Okay, do I just like do I just super blast the center now? He has four guys on that. I have one, two, three, four also on it as well. I think it's gotta be. It's gotta be this. Cause taking on E6 is just I think so deadly. Now I could be overplaying this a little bit actually. I think my rook not being here is a good idea. Okay. Ooh, this is like really complicated. There's so many captures that can take place. Like here, he can take. I just don't. I don't. I don't know the order of anything. Like I think if he takes the knight, I have to take back. I don't think I have time to play this. He takes the queen. He takes. He moves the bishop back. I take here. Yeah, I think there's no tactics. I thought maybe if here, here. Then he saves this. Then I take here. And I thought he'd take with the king. But the queen's still defended by the rook. Also, you can just take with the bishop. So I, don't, I really don't know what I'm threatening here, actually. That's an interesting move. So we're going to take that. So I'm happy because the center's opening up. Which means the rook can appear here. Like, even if... Uh, here? This looks, I think, good for me. I have three things attacking. Oh, do I play this move? I want to play this move. I don't think I have to. I think I can just take like this. And the center has disappeared. And we take like this. And hit this. Or do we take with the queen? I think we take like this. Genuinely, I'm not sure. I don't really know how to get more at his king. Whoa. Unexpected. That move was... I did not expect that move at all. Okay, so obviously I want to get my rook in the game. But his bishop is kind of irritating me. I should take that and damage his structure. Oh, can't I just play this check? I think I can play this check. Oh, I can also play this move. I think I like this move. Develop my pieces. Attacking the queen. Making me more uncomfortable. I'll connect my rooks with the check. Next move. I do not know how to target this bishop. This bishop is really incredible. So my a4 move had a downside. And that's why he played a5. a5 was to solidify the b4 square. Which is proving to be a thorn in my side. I can actually drop this back at some point, probably. And go this way. Wow. This is very good news, I think, right? Don't I take here? I'm quite confused at the moment, actually. Also, poor Kino pin. I think I pin. And then he plays f6. So, pins. f6. Takes. Takes. Oh, sorry. After takes, he has to take back. And then I can do whatever I want. But the point is that his... That I can come back this way, I think. I think I do this. I think I do this. This seems a little bit greedy, but I think this is right. I think this is right. I'm pretty sure the move is... Oh! What? Wait, can't I take the bishop now? He takes the knight, and then this is free. Or do I take the knight first? 
queen takes, rook takes, bishop takes, there takes, and then he takes back. And then this is just a hanging pawn. I think I take this way. Now, nobody has the two bishops, so don't have to worry about that. This pawn's a light square, and he has a light square bishop, which is sad. He has to take with the knight. And then that looks like a free pawn. Now it's not, because he goes this way. But he has to be careful. If he does this move, I take the queen. Oh, snap. So he has to take the queen first. Oh, then he has this fork. I didn't see. Yeah, this is, this is like, too intense for me. Yeah, he has to take my queen. Or, yeah, if he moves the knight, if he moves the rook, I take the queen. And then he takes back. Wait a second. Wait a second. Does the same trick work? I take the queen, he takes back, I take the rook. I don't know. This is looking pretty suspicious. Pretty suspicious. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh. Oh, hey, 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 look at that. Bam. So he can take it if he wants to, but then you're getting checkmated. And now my bishop is safe. Wow, this move, rookie one. And now I get to save the bishop. So I think I just have a piece. Yup, this is t terrible for him. Terrible for him. And he loses the rook and just the game. Game over. Game over. He's gonna go this way. Uh, this loses because of this. It's a free piece. He goes here, and I take the rook. Wow. He crumbled at the end. That's so sad. So I got plus nine. Very good. I went from 1975 to 1984. That's a big jump. I'm not, I'm not mad about that at all. Wow. Okay, let's look at how that, let's look at how that happened. Yeah, I blundered for sure. I knew that wasn't a smooth game by any means. I took too much time in the opening deciding what variation to play. I'm sure that E3 is not terrible. I just wasn't sure if it was uh, in an accuracy or not. I'll be surprised if that was a mistake, honestly. I knew E3 was modest, but you're following opening principles, you're developing a piece, you're controlling the center, you're getting ready to castle. So it's hard to it's hard to imagine a move like that being bad. Now E4 is definitely going to be the better move if that's not right. This is all I'm happy with. This is this is great. Uh, later, I want to show you guys a line in which uh, they play Bishop F5 or Bishop G4, trying to get the most out of their opening. There's actually a way that you can um, that you can deal with that, but. Here he captured, which is great. A4. The reason you play A4 is to stop him from solidifying this pawn. He took it for free, and he wants to save it. This move stops him from saving it, because he plays here. You take, takes, and then your knight takes at the end. Okay, he develops his bishop. This is a check variation. If it has its own name, I'm sure it's good. But you just gotta look... Oh, look at that E3, one of the top moves. Yeah, I was just thinking, because if he didn't take first, and he plays bishop F5... E4 is a great move. So I'm wondering, how come the inclusion of takes A4 makes this move okay? You know? And the refutation to E4 is just taking it, right? I'm thinking it's going to be minus point. Yeah, minus point 0.8, minus point 0.9. Yeah, okay, it's over. I'm glad I didn't play it. Because <laughs> it just loses. Okay, my move is more modest. E3. We're gonna just going to check the lines here. So knight H4 was another move you could play. Knight h4 trying to be annoying. And then knight h4... Uh, I don't know. e6 after knight h4? Cool. Knight h4, e6 is the computer's line. Just sacking the pawn structure. But I wasted a bunch of time. But then, I don't know. Okay, we're not going to think about that. I don't want to play moves like that. Okay, e3, great move. If not the best move. He played e6. Which was computer recommendation. There's no way to save the pawn. Uh, other than bishop e6, and bishop e6 is, like, incredibly stubborn. Cool. So e6 is great. I took, which is obviously the right move. I'm not even going to compare other moves. Uh, he brought his bishop out, which is good. I castled, which has to be great. And then a5. Now, I thought a5 was, like, somehow a weakening move. Here, we can do the review. I'm sitting here coming up with my own analysis, which is useful, but I don't, also don't want this video to be, like, <laughs> an hour long. So... Yeah, I got low on time, too, in the opening with that e3 move. 
somehow I have to remember that in the Slav, um, takes a4 is the Alipin, bishop f5 is the check variation. You can, you're allowed to be modest. Oops, sorry. Sorry about that. Um, let's see. So we have, in this position, uh, where were we at? Castles, a5, and I played e4 here. I thought, he's spending time, like, he's supposed to play knight bd7. a5, I thought it was weird, and e4 blunder. Wow. e4 you lose. One second. Hello? Yeah, is this uh Bam? Excellent. Yeah, I was looking to get a I was looking to get a ride. That is correct. Understood. Thank you. Bye. All right, uh, back to the position. E4 is a blunder. I thought I had to open the center because he's playing moves like A5 on the edge. The best move is knight H4. The computer's just in love with this move knight H4. So in looking at knight H4, which I think I briefly considered, I thought I saw that he plays here. After knight H4, that he would play bishop G3. And F3, I thought it was like, unnecessary, or like, it just felt strange because he still has his bishop. Let's see. Yeah, it just says f3 and, and white's, white's comfortable. And then he goes bishop h5, and then we go f3, e4, so it actually helps me if he does this. Okay. I just gotta remember to, I have to attack this check bishop. He, he tried to do this extra fancy thing of taking and playing here, and I have to like eliminate that bishop. E4 very bad, bishop g6 is a miss, and I'm not supposed to press through, I'm just supposed to move my knight. This is crazy. Yeah, mighty five. Okay. Takes, takes, and now white's better. I kind of got away with it. I shouldn't have gotten away with it, but I did. Oh, it said rookie one was better. Yeah. Bishop takes is good. Knight c6. Bishop g5 is best. I'm just getting all my pieces out, right? And I thought bishop e7 was a mistake because... Oh, I'm supposed to take first. It says rookie one is good. Castles, and now you lose. You lose the game. Because whatever you take with, you're down stuff. And I told you he had to take the queen first. But he didn't. And the reason this whole variation works is because I can threaten mate first. I'm not supposed to threaten checkmate. What? Wait, why? Okay, so if I go here... He gets out of this by playing king f8. And then he takes this way. Then check, and it's just a trade. Wow. That's intense. So in this position, I have to play rook d1. And then obviously if he takes this way, he gets mated. And what if he takes this way? Then I take it. Oh, no. And the back rank is again weak. And why does this not fail to bishop to king f8? Whoa. This is a really, like, this is a really crazy position. And if he attacks it again? Am I an idiot for thinking this would work? Oh, he's undefending the f7 pawn, I think. So, if I think if here, we take on f7. I don't, can we take here? I don't think we can take this. Yeah, rook f7. Then he moves, and then we can take this afterwards. Wait, I'm confused. King e8, and we still can't take this. Rook f e7. So basically we just get an extra pawn out of the deal. Can we just go rook f7? 
with d7, king d8, knight d4. So we eventually we're able to get our knight in the position because it threatens mate. Okay, that's huge. e4 me mega blunder and rook a e1 mega blunder. This is just missing. This is like losing the game. And f6, he just crumbled and it's over. Wait, bishop f7 is a miss. <gasps> the bishop's pinned. So this is checkmate. Oh my gosh, I didn't see that. I don't consider it. I don't. It's not a super miss. I don't think. Like it's mate and two versus whatever, but he's still losing no matter what he does. It can't believe he doesn't announce mate. Okay, there it goes. Now it announces mate. All right, and that's the game. Oh, it's giving its own variation. We don't care about that. All right, so lessons we learned during the game. Uh, this position here is called the check. The check variation of the Alapin Slav. This is the Slav defense. Check variation. This is the check bishop, and it should be eliminated at the cost of knight h4. Or it should be moved at least, right? Uh, in the check, just be modest, and then go after that. Go after that bishop. You gotta go after that bishop. It's important. Uh, e4, we, ca we can't rush to break open the center. He's just too solid, I think. It's not worth the pawn. Um, all this is fine. And the rest is just tactical. Just tactical understanding of the position. Um, yeah, okay. So, good game. Uh, the opening, we learned a new opening. The check variation. We learned that the bishop is very important. We learned not to rush, to be modest. And there you go. This is a video, actually, to go for yesterday's video, because I didn't post one. And then I'll post one later today um, for today's video. So there you go. We beat a 2,000 rated player. Let's go. Go chess. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, thanks. Bye.